Sean Connery in You Only Live Twice gives his weakest performance as James Bond. Seriously. He looks like he's falling asleep in some of these scenes. And in this video I'm going to explore the reasons why. The previous film Thunderball is consistently ranked as one of the worst in the series. And yet Connery still gave his best performance in that film. The question is why? I believe the answer lies in this man. All right, here we go now. Action! You know, every director puts his stamp on a film. Every director, some of his personality, if sometimes not all of his personality, comes off in a film. And so, naturally, some of the personality and the way that Terence was came out in the leading character of Sean. One medium dry vodka martini, mixed like you said, sir, and not stirred. Terence had worked with Sean before, and he really invented Sean as James Bond. He adored Sean, and Sean adored Terence. And you have to remember that Sean was a pretty rough diamond at that time. And uh, Terence taught him everything he knew. All the sophistication, the moves, his style, his dress, everything. The style that uh, is associated with James Bond comes from Terence's style. The clothes and restaurants and the food and the wine and all of those kind of things are Terence Young. It was his style and his old uh, schooling of Sean that really um, made James Bond James Bond. I think as he probably did with, with Sean Connery, he, he would try to to teach you perhaps some etiquette that you didn't have or, or that sort of thing and teach you the ways of the world, particularly cinematically. There's Terence Young uh, discussing with Claudine, there's a camera unit. The location shooting of Sunnibal was a lot of fun and uh, because it's a certain atmosphere that was created and I must say Terence was great at creating the right sort of atmosphere. He was very friendly with Sean and Sean uh, was extremely relaxed and he was at his most relaxed when uh, Terence uh, directed him. I credit Terence with the really creating Sean as Bond. Uh, it was uh, quite easy for Terence to teach Sean all the things that he felt James Bond ought to be. And they had a great relationship and that reflected on the whole crew, you know. As you can see Terence is highly thought of by both cast and crew. But do I consider Terence to be the best Bond film director? Well, not exactly. From watching the Inside documentaries, it is clear that at times he was unorganized, not shooting enough film and relying heavily on post-production to save the day. However, if you consider each Bond film as a study of the character, then Terence Young is without doubt the master of that particular study. But apart from the obvious style that Terence is noted for, I'd like to talk about the substance. In his first film Dr. No, Bond admits that he is scared. Something we don't normally associate with Connery's Bond or with the character in general. I'm glad your hands are sweating too. Of course I'm scared too. So be natural and leave all the talking to me. And in Thunderball, it is the only time in the whole series where Bond is seen begging for help. Connery's Bond had a rather unique way of expressing his emotions. I've come to offer my sincere condolences. <coughs> that brings me to this scene in Thunderball. In my opinion, this is the most important contribution Terence Young made to the character. Now it's about your brother. What about him? He's... He's dead. 
what happened. It's a long story, and it involves your friend, Largo. It is rumored that when Bond puts on his sunglasses it is to disguise that he is genuinely emotional, but a lot of people dismiss this as product placement. However, that is not the first indicator that Bond is fighting his emotions. Take notice of how Bond hands over her brother's possessions. Pay close attention to how Bond's hand trembles slightly. It is incredibly subtle but I believe the confirmation that this is deliberate is when Bond clenches his fist when drawing his hand away. Up until this point in the series, Bond had always reacted to emotional scenes with violence, I believe the trembling hand ending with the clenched fist to be an inverted parallel of those scenes. If this is deliberate, and I believe that it is, then it is without doubt the most genius communication of emotion through body language I've ever seen in a movie. I can't say with certainty that it was the director's idea. It could just as well have been Connery's, but considering Terence's films always tapped into Bond's humanity I would wager that it was his idea.